Hey my friend, did you know that your body is electromagnetic? Your body has an electrical charge and a magnetic field around that charge. According to some experts, nothing happens in your body without an electromagnetic exchange between your cells, which controls your chemistry. When this energy is disrupted by an injury, by an accident, or just by getting older, our cells aren't able to be as effective. Pulsed electromagnetic fields are based on technology that Nikola Tesla first developed and have been shown to decrease inflammation, increase your circulation, blood circulation, enhance your muscle function, speed up bone healing, reduce the effects of stress, and much, much more. So check out this episode where we go deep into pulsed electromagnetic fields and how they can be helpful to your body. If you're enjoying the show, please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you can get notified when we release new episodes. Our goal is to help you look and feel younger and live your most confident and adventurous life. Lastly, if you're looking to get thicker, stronger, and fuller hair, then head on over to fullyvital.com and check out their product suite. With that said, let's dive right into the episode. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to the Anti-Aging Hacks podcast. Today, my guest is Dr. William Pollock, who's an MD and is formerly board-certified family physician with a practice near Baltimore, Maryland. He has had academic appointments at a number of universities, including Johns Hopkins and the University of Maryland. He has had training in acupuncture, homeopathy, hypnosis, body work, and is considered the foremost authority on the use of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy in North America. And he's got a, a wider background, which we'll get into. But with that said, Dr. Pollock, welcome to the Anti-Aging Hacks podcast. Thank you very much, Faraz. I'm a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's an honor, and I look forward to sharing with your audience. That's great. There's a lot of questions that I have for you. And folks, we're going to be talking about pulsed electromagnetic therapy, which is exciting new technology. I guess it's not that new, but it's an exciting technology which talks about how you can use this device or devices to heal your body from the inside out. And uh, Dr. Pollock has done a lot of extensive research. He's written two books on the subject, and we'll get into that as well. In terms of an intro about yourself, Dr. Pollock, will you please tell the audience about who you are and how you got into pulse electromagnetic therapy? Sure. Um, well, as a family physician, and I've been practicing medicine for a long, long time, and I ran two medical groups, one at Hopkins and one in, in New Jersey. But as a medical group, we often shared patients. And we had two, two admissions back to back, very close together to the hospital for people who were uh, bleeding out. They were, had serious significant bleeding from their, from their gut. Mm -hmm. And one of them almost died. And the cause of the bleeding was ibuprofen, wow. was a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. And as it turns out now in retrospect, about 16,000 people a year per, per year die from gastric bleeding from ibuprofen, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Wow. We recently withdrew a recommendation for using aspirin to prevent stroke and heart attack. And the reason that was withdrawn is there's more risk from dying from the aspirin than there is benefit, largely because of gastric bleeding. So I had these patients and I said, well, this is crazy medicine. You know, we're people are dying, you could be killing people to treat their pain. So we gotta do something different. So I learned acupuncture. After I finished my acupuncture studies, I, this was 1990, acupuncture, stay away from me from, with those needles. Yes. Right? No, 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 no acupuncture. So I, I started looking at different ways of doing acupuncture that didn't involve needles. And I discovered magnets. I started using magnets extensively and discovered that magnets not only treated acupuncture points on a specific acupuncture point, but they also treated the tissue around the magnet. Hmm. Well, that opened up a whole lot of stuff for me, basically, as a, as a physician, as a, somebody who's looking for alternative therapies to deal with chronic pain and so on. But I discovered that magnets do a whole lot more. Long story short, over the years, I met another doctor from the uh, Czech Republic, and he had translated a lot of the Russian, the Eastern European science on magnetic field therapy. And we co-authored a book called Magnetic Therapy in Eastern Europe, a review of 30 years of research. So at that, at that point, now it's like 20 years later, that was tw 20 years ago, that was 30 years of research. And the research goes on and on and on. And so um, I set up a website. I started working with magnetic therapy extensively, set up a website with the information. And I thought the website was going to be a living document. And then I get, I loaded the website with a ton of information and the website still there. It's called drpollock.com. And so then, but the websites I discovered over time, websites have significant limitations. Books have significant limitations. So every medium has its own limitations. 
but a, a book becomes a sort of a permanent record, essentially. Now, unfortunately, a book is dead on arrival. And in particular, in this science, in this world that we live in, the science is changing constantly. So today, a fact, interesting fact, if a doctor reads two hours of journals a day, who reads two hours of journals a day? Nobody. Right? But if a doctor reads two hours of journals a day, in one month, the doctor will be 32 years behind. Oh, wow. That's the explosion of knowledge that we have. So basically, we produced the book. We did the book. We did the magnetic therapy website, drpalk.com, and then produced the book called Power Tools for Health, a review of 30 years of research. Now, the reason I did that book is because I wanted to put the science in one place. And if you try to find the science on PEMFs, you're going to drive yourself crazy. You're going to be uh, Googling forever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that information you don't have access to. So we have over 500 references in that book that gives you the science of magnetic field therapy. And we talk about the mechanisms, like 25 different actions of magnetic fields. And I review the science for treating 50 different health conditions, scientifically backed, wow. mm -hmm. right? Not just, I said it treats diabetes, or I said it does this, because most people who make those claims don't even know the science, or they read one article. So the purpose of that book then was to give you the foundation. And then the third book now, which is going to be coming out th later this year, is called Supercharge Your Health with PEMF Therapy. So that book uh, basically dealt with something that was not well done in the first book, which is now practical. How do I decide on a magnetic therapy? You and me, if I decide magnetic therapy might be something I should look at for my problem or problems, what? how should I do this? What should, what should I look for? And then once once I get it, what do I do to treat it? And in the, in the new book, Supercharge Your Health with um, PEMF Therapy, we, I review 80 different health conditions. Wow. Yeah. Okay. No, not much science. It's more, much more practical. But if I tell you, if I tell you, if, if you have a concussion, what do I think about when I have a concussion? What do I have to think about in terms of how magnetic field therapy integrates in, in dealing with concussion? And I do a little bit of that. And then we go into the, the methods. How, what do you get? What kind of magnetic therapy device do you get? How do you treat? And then what else can you do to help, help the condition? Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, I've been reading your book and it's quite a fascinating read. And again, as you mentioned, there's 80 health conditions and you talk in a little bit of detail in all of those. And I've been looking at different ones to see which ones apply or which ones I could use with myself or my clients. So it's been a fascinating read so far. Thank you for putting this volume of work out there. I'm sure it took a long time. Now, before we get into electromagnetic fields or frequencies and talk about all the stuff that we can't see, basically, uh, I want to get one thing out of the way, which is EMFs. But a lot of people talk about this. There's a lot of worry about you know, the Wi-Fi signals in our homes, the Bluetooth receivers in our cell phones and on our laptops, as well as uh, the 5G towers that are coming in everywhere. So what's your perspective on EMFs, Dr. Pollock, and how bad are they or good are they? So EMFs are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Life is fundamentally electromagnetic. Nothing happens in the body without an electromagnetic exchange. So electromagnetics, which is physics, controls the chemistry, which then controls the tissue. Now, um, magnetic field therapy, pulsed electromagnetic fields, or PEMFs, so it's pulsed electromagnetic fields, are still electromagnetic. So therefore, while if there's danger with all that other stuff, then there's gotta be danger with PEMFs. Huge, huge, huge difference. The biggest difference is the waveform is the wave frequencies, the wavelength. Mm -hmm. So the big risk systems, the big risk electromagnetic fields come from microwaves, right? We're bombarded with microwaves all the time. So that I don't call those electromagnetic fields. I call them environmental magnetic fields, which is still EMFs. Mm -hmm. So pulse magnetic fields are extremely low frequency. They're designed for treatment. They're not designed for communication or other broadcast purposes. So those broadcast purposes have their own purposes, but they basically are ignoring biology because there's another purpose behind it. And of course, a lot of money. So EMFs, the ones that we worry about are extremely high frequency, which means the body absorbs it. Extremely low frequency magnetic fields pass completely through the body. They don't stop, they go right on through. EMFs, basically if you put a cell phone to your ear, that ear will be very red. The longer you leave it there, the more red it's going to be. Why? Because the cell phone is absorbing the microwaves emitted by the cell phone, right? The ear is absorbing the microwaves emitted by the cell phone. If you look at the opposite ear, it'll be slightly redder. 
or your hands, they'll be slightly redder. But the most of the effect is going to be right there locally. The slightly redder on the other side is because just reflex changes in the body, right? That's natural body's response to that stimulation to that ear. But you're basically cooking the ear and you're cooking the brain next to the cell phone. So nobody should be putting a cell phone to their ear. We should be using headsets or the tube, or the um, tube type connectors uh, or speakers. We shouldn't be putting cell phones to our heads, not for any length of time. A minute or two minutes or five minutes is okay. The kids are on their phones to their, to their heads all the time. Right. Bad, really bad stuff. So that's bad EMFs. Now they have their purposes again, but to the body, it's an irritant. It's a stressor. And the body has to respond to that stressor. Whereas with PEMFs, pulse electromagnetic fields, that's different. EMFs are broadcast into the environment. They are what we call open loop magnetic fields. Whereas a PEMF is basically a current flowing through a wire that then pulses the magnetic field. As the current pulses, the magnetic field pulses. And that's a closed loop. It doesn't go anywhere. It just goes out and back, out and back, out and back. And when you're doing that next to the head, basically that magnetic field is going into the head and then back, into the head and back. That's why it's called pulsed electromagnetic fields. Got and it. they're therapeutic. That's the primary distinction between them. So put aside the EMFs. We don't really need to worry about those. PEMFs are designed for healing and helping the body. Mm -hmm. And, you know, reading your book just refreshed what I'd learned, um, I don't know, middle school or high school, that an electric charge that moves through maybe, you know, a wire creates an electric or electricity when it moves through a wire creates an electric charge around it and also creates a magnetic charge around it. And that's what you're referring to as the electromagnetic field. And you're saying that our bodies intrinsically have these electromagnetic fields because individual cells and tissues and organs generate these in some charges, charges in small amounts. Uh, and then we're saying that because those control the chemicals, which control what else is going on in your body. Is that what, how this works inside our bodies? Absolutely. So the body is just one great big electromagnetic apparatus. We're electrical because we have electrolytes, mm -hmm. right? We have minerals, we have fluid flowing through our bodies. Right. When the heart beats, when the heart pulses, it put, puts a pulse, a blood pulse into the bloodstream. That's creating a magnetic field. Because it's a moving charge column, mm -hmm. right? It has all the electrolytes and the, the different tissues with their charges. So you, that's called magnetohydrodynamics, and that's how mag, that's how the subway, submarines work. They increase charge. They produce. They generate charge from the submarine with the flow of um, different minerals against the, the flow of the water, and the water is all saline around the world primarily, right? Mm -hmm. So the body does the same thing. We have them at extremely low levels and they're necessary at extremely low levels for the natural functions of the body. But the natural functions of the body get stuck. That's why we have disease. That's why we illness. That's why we have injury. Injury has to be recovered. Even if it's a mild injury, even if I bump my knuckle, that's an injury. Now that's a mild injury, not like a cut or not like a stab with a needle or a shot with a gun. Those injuries are bigger and they take a lot more work for the body to heal. But we're constantly dealing with uh, taps to the body. I call them dents, right? Basically dents, sc scratches, right. my, my mild scratches and bruises. So we heal those very rapidly. But the bigger, the bigger bruises, the bigger damage to the body has to be healed by the body. And the body has to marshal all kinds of resources to deal with that, that, uh, that injury. But the body's not efficient. It's not efficient in doing that. So if I do, if I have a cut to my skin and I put a magnetic field to that cut, it'll heal in half the time than it would normally heal. So basically, when we're talking about healing ourselves, healing injury, we're um, basically taking chance. We're relying on chance that the body's healthy, that the tissue's going to be able to heal, that we're going to give, that there's going to have enough time to do this. So if I, if I keep banging a cut, if I keep stirring up the cut, it's going to take a lot longer to heal than if I let the cut heal itself and give it the body a fighting chance. So we're removing chance from the equation when we do magnetic field therapy. So let me ask you this. I, I believe that the body is an intelligent animal. Like we intrinsically, the body knows how to heal. But are you saying that as we age, those taps on the body start to wear it down, it loses homeostasis. Therefore, it cannot heal perfectly as it would when we were in our teens or 20s, perhaps. Is that what you're saying? Or is, does this apply to all ages? So it applies to all ages. In my in the Power Tools for Health book, I had a personal experience with a kid, with a little girl, three-year-old girl. 
Mm-hmm. So a three-year-old girl is supremely healing, right? But we know lots of kids that are supremely healing that still have lots of problems to deal with, right? right. Anyway, this little child cut off the end of her thumb and a door jam. Cut her off. So we convinced the doctors to put it back, to reattach it. What the doctor wanted to do, what doctors do, is they clean up the wound and they sew it up and maybe they'll take a piece of tissue from somewhere else and cover up the wound. It's called a graft. To do a graft, that means that that child would have an abnormal thumb for the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. So we convinced them to sew it back on again, use the pulse magnetic field an hour and a half to three hours a day. Literally. So the first picture that we show has got no blood supply. You wouldn't expect any blood supply. It's been torn off, it's been okay. separate, completely separated. They reattached it, which basically closes the wound. But now there's still some tissue connections there. And the body senses that there's a other tissue there. It's still alive. It's no blood supply, but the tissue is still alive. The body senses that tissue. It's called a morphogenetic field. And so what happens then is the body starts a repair process. So literally in 12 weeks, she's regrown the thumb. Wow. Okay. Interesting. She could do it on her own. Would she be able to do it on her own? Possibly. But we removed chance. So even then, you can provide more energy into the body to do an even better job than what the body would normally do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me ask you this. What is BEMF actually doing in the body? So you said it's healing, but how does it actually accomplish the healing process? What is it doing at the cellular level? Well, let's take an example from a normal body without magnetic field therapy, right? There's an an expression. You don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So motion and movement, our physiology relies on everything being in motion. Everything is in motion constantly. We have, it's been said that we have about 2000 uh, biochemical processes per cell per per second. We have a trillion, hundred trillion cells in our bodies. Every one of those cells is in constant motion never sleeps. It may change. It may rest a little bit. It may be more active, but it never sleeps. So, so therefore we, we are producing energy with motion. When we decrease motion, when we decrease the energy in the body, the energy production of the body, we decrease, decrease our body's capacity to repair, recover and regenerate. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what happens when you get older, you're decreasing that capacity to regenerate, but, and no matter what the age is, you could always use more energy than what the body normally produces. And fortunately, electromagnetic field therapy is safe. It goes through the body completely. So a a, a magnetic field will pass through the body and to a magnetic field, the body does not exist. Sure. Magnetic field, the body is air. And you can actually do tests where you measure the magnetic field with a body in between, remove the body and the magnetic field doesn't change one iota. Okay. so So the tissue doesn't have an impact on the field at all. The tissue has zero impact on the field. It doesn't matter whether it's bone or brain or muscle or skin or fat. It doesn't matter. It's going through the body. But the body does not ignore the magnetic field. The magnetic knows the magnet, the body knows the magnetic field is there. The body is now stimulated by the magnetic field. And electromagnetics interact with each other based on Faraday's law and Maxwell's laws, wherein there's charge, there's a magnetic field, and there's vice, there's a reaction going back and forth. And so we're using those principles of current flowing, of you know, current flowing in the body and magnetic fields interacting with that current, ion flows, biochemical processes, all of that's in motion. And the magnetic field interacts with that motion to create even more energy in the body. And fortunately, uh, that energy production is by the body itself. So it's not like you're, t- you're taking heat or cold or uh, electric current applied directly to the body or light applied to the body, intense light supplied to the body. All of that are, all of those are external stimuli that are more than what the body would normally have to deal with. It's going to have to react to it. Mm-hmm. So the magnetic field, basically the body says, okay, I'm fine. Go bye. See you later. There's almost no reaction. There's a little bit of, ah, oh, that was interesting. Like a tickle. That was interesting. And then you go on about your business. So you make note of it, but you don't pay attention to it. But when you're stuck, you need the attention. Now the body says, okay, I need extra energy. You're, you're helping me to produce more energy. And therefore you're doing whatever repair work needs to, ha- to happen or rebalancing needs to happen. I see. So what you're saying then is that the magnetic field goes to the tissues in our bodies 
it's not affected. The body doesn't affect it, but the body is affected by it in a positive way where it creates more ATP or more energy at a cellular level. That energy is the energy currency of the body. Therefore, it allows the cell to be more active, to do what it's supposed to do regardless, and to heal and to be in homeostasis, be perfect. Is that what then is the downstream impact of healing all these conditions? That's correct. And that's why in the Power Tools for Health book, I talk about 25 different mechanisms. And since then, I've discovered at least two or three more since I published the book. So those are the mechanisms. These are mechanisms of actions of magnetic fields. This is what the magnetic fields do in the body. Mm. Or in other words, this is what the magnetic fields are causing the body to do in response to the magnetic field. And those actions then derive everything else that happens. So those actions don't care what disease you have. Those that's actions nice. don't care what tissue is damaged. Those actions really don't care whether you're male or female or you're old or young. I see. So those actions happen regardless. Is it like a, would it be like a caveman, like a brute force approach? Meaning you just increase the ATP in the body and then the body is smart enough to say, I need to allocate my resources in this tissue, in this joint, in this diabetic ulcer. And therefore, based on that more energy, it can go heal itself. Is that what's going on? So yes, you can only increase ATP to a point. Mm -hmm. You can't make excessive amounts of ATP. The body will decide how much ATP it can create. Now with the increased ATP production, so if you go, so magnetic field therapy, we know you can increase ATP locally by between 100 to 600%. Wow. Locally. Okay. All right, so that means the body's gonna say, okay, I can't do any more than this, but I've, I've increased my ATP. Now I can do this with the ATP that I've increased. But there's a interesting phenomenon with ATP. ATP does nothing. That's a misconception nothing. about ATP. Please it explain. Does nothing. ATP has to be hydrolyzed. It has to be activated. So ATP is three phosphates, adenosine triphosphate. So you have ADP as a precursor. It's got two phosphates. Then with enzymes and phosphate, you add another phosphate molecule to the tri to adenosine diphosphate, which makes ATP. In order to create energy from ATP, you have to hydrolyze one of those phosphates. You have to strip it off. And the stripping off of that phosphate is what releases the energy in the body. Right. Right. So again, you still need you still but the PMFs are causing constant recycling of the ATP. You're making more, you're stripping it off, you're making more. Stripping it off, making more. So it's a cycling, cycling, cycling process, depending on the, your language, cycling process, right, to produce the ATP and re continue to recharge. Okay. Is that dependent, Dr. Pollock, on cellular respiration or does it happen outside of what food and oxygen you have in the system? They're combined. One relies on the other. One needs the other. So the ATP production then causes cellular respiration to happen. That mm -hmm. energy that you're producing causes the cellular respiration to happen because the cellular respiration needs energy for the okay. process. Gotcha. So this technology, PMF, is completely safe. FDA has looked at it and they've approved it? So uh, it's not FDA approved. Most of it is not FDA approved. There are FDA approved devices that, and you know, we all know about the issues with, the, with FDA. If you get an FDA approval, it means you can use it for one thing for that particular indication. You created enough proof that the FDA is satisfied, you can make a claim that it does something. So for example, um, magnetic field therapy has approved for healing non-union fractures. Those devices have been out there for like 25 years or so. So if you have a fracture that won't heal, the bone is broken and it won't heal, it's not knit together. Now you got a joint where that bone should be solid. So after six months, if a fracture hasn't yield, healed, it's called a non-union. Research has shown that magnetic field therapy all of a sudden wakes up the healing in a non-union, even if it's been there for five years, it wakes it up. Hmm. And the more magnetic therapy you do, the more magnetic stimulation you do to that non-union, the faster it heals. So if you do nine hours a day of stimulation to that fracture site, you'll heal in about 180 days, faster, about three months faster than you would if you only did three hours a day or less than three hours a day. Interesting. I have a wonderful slide that shows that, that the, the healing Magnetic field therapy, the more that you do, the more stimulation you do, the more you heal, the faster you heal. Got it. So, using, so that's approved by the FDA. Gotcha. So using more of uh, pulse electromagnetic therapy, a lot more is not going to be harmful to the body, right? Not going to be harmful. Some circumstances need that extra stimulation continually, right? Because it's stuck. The healing is stuck. Once the healing Im improves and once the, uh, the kinetics of that um, healing get to a point of almost healed, 
then you begin to back off the amount of energy that you need to keep the healing going. So you need a lot more healing energy at the beginning Mm because it's so bad off, it's so stuck and damaged that as you start stimulating the process, then over time you decrease the amount of energy that you need. Gotcha. Okay, so let's ask. uh, Let me ask you a different question. A lot of people that I talk to have sports injuries, right? They've got a shoulder rotator cuff injury, or they've hurt, you know, their elbow or whatnot, or their knees. And, um, and there's, a, they've been long standing injuries for many, many years. So pulse electromagnetic therapy can go in and start to heal that tissue as well over time. So magnetic field therapy does not raise the dead. Okay. Dead tissue is dead tissue. It may have a scar. You may make the scar look prettier, maybe a better looking scar, but it's still a scar. So there are limitations, and those limitations basically are the body's limitations, the body's ability to to heal itself. So yes, magnetic therapy will wake things up, and they will speed up the healing process because of the energy that you're introducing into the body. Gotcha. And so you explained the difference, I believe, between just using magnets, because if you're talking about just a magnetic field, you could have a big old magnet, and that has a magnetic field as well. Why is the pulse so important in this aspect? Um, so a magnet, once you put a magnet on the tissue, as you're putting the magnet onto the tissue, the magnetic field is changing things in the tissue, Mm -hmm. but there's no more change. That's it. The magnetic field is just there. So now what you're doing is you're relying on the natural motions and movement and activity of the body to interact with that magnetic field to do something. Right. But if, so that basically the magnet is static and the body's dynamic. But if you have a pulse magnetic field, now the magnetic field is dynamic and the body is dynamic. So you get a lot more action going on. Another example is the scent of a rose in a room. When you walk into a room, you smell the rose. You stay in the room and what happens? You get accustomed to it. You don't smell it anymore. Yeah. It doesn't mean the rose isn't putting out a scent. You're just not smelling it. So there's adaptation. And when there's adaptation, then what happens is that you don't get action anymore. So with pulse magnetic field therapy, basically you're, you're continually stimulating and you don't get quite the same accommodation or adaptation to the magnetic field. And that's why time becomes important. The intensity of the field becomes important. How, um, how often you do it becomes important. The condition of the body becomes important. So when you talk about dead tissue, some tissues can't heal. Well, you tear some tissue. So athletes can t- will tear a tissue, but it doesn't heal. Other tissues heal. So skin heals, ligaments don't heal as well. Bone heals, bone takes a long time to heal. So you have different healing timelines for different tissues. The cornea heals at 24 hours. The skin takes two to three weeks, four weeks to heal a cut. Ligaments may never heal. That's why we have to use wires to sew up Achilles tendons. Because they're not going to heal because they don't have a blood supply. Right. Right. So magnetic field therapy will accommodate to... The body will accommodate to the magnetic field to the extent that that tissue can, can heal itself. Okay. I want to get to some of the things you mentioned in a second, but I did want to ask you to list maybe a few of the conditions. You've listed 80 in your book, but a few of the conditions so listeners can get a sense for some of the practical applications of PEMS therapy. Sure. Um, again, virtually any tissue of the body is going to be helped by magnetic field therapy. Uh, the ner- nervous system is, is uh, pretty sensitive to magnetic fields. So magnetic field therapy can help basically most neurological conditions. So you're talking about concussions, uh, you're talking about uh, depression, and magnetic fields are FDA approved to treat depression using high intensity magnetic fields applied to the brain. And you're talking about PTSD and anxiety, very um, helped by uh, PMS. Sleep is a CNS problem. Sleep is a nervous system issue. So you can manage sleep with PMS by inducing Uh, changes in the brain that will uh, induce sleep or help facilitate sleep. Any pain condition basically can be helped with magnetic field therapy, but it depends on the tissue. It depends on the chronicity, depends on the vitality of the body. So there are lots of different factors that go into determining to what extent pain can be helped. PMS at the very least help with some of the aspects of just pain itself, but you need to remove the pain. You have to heal the tissue that's causing the pain, the damage that's causing the pain that relies on the tissue's vitality that relies on how quickly that tissue can heal itself. It relies on the magnetic field therapy, as I said. So pain is something that magnetic fields can help a lot. And chronic pain syndromes cause a problem to the brain. I call that chronic pain brain, right? So then if you're treating a chronic hip problem or chronic knee problem, 
that you're probably going to need to treat the brain too, not just the local tissue. You're not going to fix the problem until you fix the local pain problem that's causing the problem in the first place. So you you have to continue to work on the knee to try to heal itself as well as it can or the hip as well as it can. And then so then, then the so pain is a big one. Diabetes, any damage in the body. Diabetes causes tissue damage by decreasing circulation, by causing huge amounts of inflammation. So PEMFs are incredibly important for dealing with inflammation in the body. And I have a blog on my website about uh, adenosine and inflammation and how magnetic fields help with that. Uh, General function of of the body. We talked about tissue regeneration with the thumb. How about liver? How about any, any damaged tissue, lungs? Now we talk, now we have COVID and the long haul syndrome or the long COVID syndrome, all these people with lung problems because of COVID. Well, PEMFs are incredibly important and very helpful for healing the lungs post COVID, post pneumonia, post anything that basically causes lung uh, infection and damage, migraines, multiple sclerosis, uh, osteopenia and osteoporosis. PMF stimulate those in ways that you can't do with anything else. Even the medication we use does not stimulate bone, new bone formation. So we talked about non-union fractures. Well, we know from that that the PMFs can stimulate bone. So why not use it for osteoporosis or osteopenia? Um, pancreatic conditions. We talked about neurological like Parkinson's, prostate enlargement. So you can, you can improve the function of the bladder. So not only are you healing tissue, you're also improving function. One of the key aspects of magnetic fields where I learned early on with, with acupuncture is you're stimulating acupuncture points and meridians. So every time you do magnetic field therapy to the body, you can't avoid the acupuncture points and meridians. So how much of the action is due to the, the way you feel better is due to the magnetic fields stimulating the acupuncture points in addition to the healing. Acupuncture doesn't create healing. Acupuncture stimulates the body's processes and downstream effects that can help with healing but not direct healing like you can with magnet. So magnets stimulate the tissue directly. Acupuncture is indirect. Got it. So, so those are those are examples. Okay. So let me ask you something you've talked about in the book, which is the concept of local application of PEMF therapy versus regional, which is the larger area versus full body application. So how would you describe for the listeners, what are the differences between these three different types of PEMF? Um, okay. So, Usually you're going to concentrate if you have just a hip problem or a shoulder problem. That's if you have, you're an athlete and you have an injury and your shoulder that's injured. Well, yeah, that's what you're going to focus on. That's local. Okay. When I'm talking about post COVID, I I need to treat the whole lung. So the lung becomes regional. Mm -hmm. The belly basically becomes regional. The brain can be considered local versus regional. So the whole body, we need help with our whole bodies. As we get older, we definitely need help with our whole bodies. The more uh, athletic we are, the more injuries we've suffered, the more help we need to the whole body. So while you can focus on your shoulder temporarily, in the long run, you're going to eventually do a whole body magnetic therapy. You're going to need it, right? Yeah. Eventually. Everybody gets there eventually. Yeah. And I call aging death by a thousand cuts. Correct. Right? It's all the nicks and cuts and scrapes and rattles and tears and sprains and strains. They all add up over time Mm -hmm. Uh, from an energetic perspective, you know, eventually it kind of depletes the body because you still have to have a lot of resources to deal with not only the new things that you're doing to your body, but the old things that you did to your body. Correct. Okay. I got you. That makes sense. So again, to summarize, I think from my perspective is if you have specific injuries, then use local or regional ways with PEMF therapies. And then once you're done, once you can, spend a few months or a few weeks healing your injury, then you go back to the generalized approach of full body PMF. Is that how you approach this, Dr. Pollock? Partly it's approached by what's available, the technology that's available. Part of, it, the, part of the answer is also going to be how much you're willing to spend, mm-hmm. right? So with all the biohacking that people are doing, they're spending a ton of money on biohacking. Right. And a lot of that biohacking is all pretty well local, right? But we need to expand our perspective that, you know, if you treat the whole body and most of the best, most of the best whole body systems have both local and um, whole body uh, benefits, you treat the whole body for health maintenance and general cleaning of things. So every single day, every single day we age, if you have 2000 biochemical processes in every cell, every single second, every day throughout the day. So throughout the day, nothing's sleeping, nothing's not, everything's working constantly. So how much help does the whole body need? When you're 40, 
When you're 25, you're 40, well, you're invincible. Once you get to 40, then you start noticing the creaks and the rattles. Once you get to 60, the creaks and rattles are not just creaks and rattles. Now you can't do certain things. Right. Right. And so on. So if you start the process early, earlier in your life of conditioning the whole body and then taking care of business at the shoulder or any other nicks and cuts and scrapes and rattles early, aggressively, it doesn't take as long to heal and you're not leaving things to chance. Correct. Okay. That's the key. Don't want to leave things to chance. Yeah, I agree. Let's move on to another question I have, which you emphasize in your book, the concept of intensity, meaning how strong should the force, should the field be around the area that you're treating? And there's machines, as you've listed also in your book, that have a high power and some have a low power. So what's how should somebody that doesn't know PEMF think about power and how it applies to their lives? So there is a kind of an inverse relationship between power and time. So everything, all healing takes time, right? It doesn't happen instantaneously. Now, um, the, the adenosine blog on the website. So it's adenosine, it's inflammation, pain, adenosine, and PEMFs. That's the name of the blog. That gives you tables. So the research on adenosine has shown that the optimal magnetic field at the target tissue is 15 Gauss. So Gauss is a measure of magnetic field intensity, 1,5 G-A-U-S-S, Gauss. So if I'm treating, again, my wrist, a cut on my wrist, that's superficial. So you probably only really need about 15 Gauss, right? If I'm treating across a shoulder, now we're talking about a distance. So you have to compensate for the distance. You're treating across a hip, it's going to be a bigger distance. You're treating the whole lung, it's going to be a bigger distance, front to back. So you have to account for the distance. And in that blog, I have tables that tell you the magnetic fields that you need to start with to treat at a distance. So why? Because we know that magnetic fields drop off very rapidly. Light falls off very rapidly. Sound falls off very rapidly. Heat, cold, all these physical phenomena, radiation type phenomena, which are not ionizing radiation, but the radiation phenomena drop off by something called the inverse square law. There are other laws as well, but the inverse square law is used in medicine to, to calculate um, the, the intensity that you need to be able to do something at a distance. So for example, if you are treating across the brain, so how wide is the brain? How wide is the head in most people? Six inches, let's say, right? Across the head. In order to deliver 15 gauss at this side of the head and treat this side of the head, then you're going to need a magnetic field that's going to compensate for that 15, that loss of magnetic field across that brain. And you're going to need about 4,000 gauss. Right. So gotcha. if you start, there are a lot of whole body magnetic systems that are that are less than one Gauss. Wow. They cost five thousand dollars. All right. There's a very popular one. I'm not going to name it. It starts with a B. It's like one or two Gauss and it's close to six thousand dollars. So if you need 15 Gauss right there and you start with one Gauss, what kind of benefit are you going to get? Nothing. Not much. You're going to help the acupuncture points and the meridians. So you're going to feel better. There's no doubt about it, you feel better, but it won't do the healing. And it won't squelch, won't quench the inflammation in your body. And so we're, we all have inflammation every day. Our bodies mm -hmm. are dealing with inflammation. So if you don't have the right magnetic field intensity to deal with that inflammation, you're going to get what? Aging. Right? right? Yeah, chronic inflammation is... becomes very important because of the inverse square law. And then you have to calculate the right magnetic field intensity, which is given to you in that blog. Got it. So if, you, right. if you're trying to get 15 gauss in the middle of your head and you start with a machine that has 4,000 gauss on the side of your head, that 4,000 gauss that's touching your ear is not going to harm the ear. It doesn't matter because it's not going to have a negative impact on your head. You just want the 15 gauss to reach the middle of your head. Right. So if you, ideally you want to do the middle, but then if you, but then if you're going to do the middle, you're going to have, you don't know how much you're getting into the middle because you don't know how much you really need in the middle, mm -hmm. but you're going to have to apply it to the side of your head. And then after some period of time, you're going to have to apply it to the other side of your head. I got you. So if you start with the right magnetic field intensity to go right across the whole head, you're going to have more than enough and it, more, it doesn't hurt anything. The mm -hmm. body simply ignores the extra. Okay. Gotcha. The other concept you've talked about in your book is, so we talked about intensity. Now let's touch on frequency. And there's different modalities where you can use PEMF for sleep improvement. 
or keeping you in delta wave, which is, I believe, under five or four hertz, the delta wave. And so that'd be one frequency you'd use. And there's an alpha brain wave that's, I don't know, seven to 13, I believe. So you'd have to have a frequency in that. How does it work for brainwave entrainment? Um, and I assume that's different from healing. This is just for keeping you in different brain states, correct? Well, that's correct. So uh, healing is, again, relies on intensity. Now, frequency entrainment also relies on intensity. So I'll give you a, an example. If I'm going to tap on my, on my desk, that's not very loud. What happens is I keep doing this. Your brain is going to start paying attention. You can barely hear the tapping. The brain can be easily distracted. I go like this. The brain cannot ignore that. I'm going to have to do magnetic therapy. It just injured my knuckle. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make is that the, the frequency is the brain. Is frequencies and different parts of the brain are in different frequencies. So right now, if you're listening and you're learning, you're thinking, you're processing and so on, you're going to be in beta. You might have some gamma going on as well, but you're going to be a large, a large part of you, especially your frontal lobes, are going to be in beta. The back of your brain could be in alpha. Other parts of your brain could be in delta. So we have delta in our brains and delta is deep sleep, three hertz. So in the middle of the night, about an hour, an hour, an hour, and a half, sorry, an hour to an hour and a half into sleep, we go into delta. That's deep sleep. And we stay in delta for about an hour, an hour and a half. We have some amount of delta later, but most of it is concentrated in that first hour after we fall asleep. You have to go through theta. When your head hits the pillow, you go into theta. You have to go through theta to get the delta. You can't get the delta without going through theta. Correct. Because the brain has to slow itself down. Mm -hmm. So delta, we spend maybe an hour, an hour and a half in, in sleep during the night. And the rest of the night, we're spending in theta. So theta is seven hertz, approximately. It's between five to eight hertz. Mm -hmm. Delta is between one and three, one or four hertz. So five to eight is, is theta. And then from uh, eight to 13 approximately is alpha. And so what you're doing then is if you're throwing these frequencies at the brain, the brain starts to pay attention. And then more and more of the brain starts to listen to that frequency. This is basically the same principle we have with radios. So if you have an analog radio, you're turning the dial on your radio, which is a tuner here. So you're tuning the radio. And these frequencies from the radio stations and TV stations are out there in the atmosphere. They're there all the time, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tune the radio. When it tunes to 1090, right? All of a sudden you start to hear the signal. And as you're coming into the station, the signal becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And once you capture that signal, actually the sound increases because now you have an, a full entrainment, right? So the, the brain is like that. It's a tuner. The brain's a tuner, it's listening. And when we present the frequency to the brain, it starts to listen. We present it on a constant basis over a period of time, then the brain starts to listen really well and it tunes itself. Now, not all of the brain becomes tuned to that, all right? If you were in full delta all the time, you'd be brain dead or near brain dead. We see that right. in dramatically traumatized brains, mostly delta. So we need to have our brains being very plastic and moving to whatever stimuli they need but you're recruiting more and more of the brain waves into that frequency. So if you wanna be more alert, you present the brain with higher sound, higher intensity, frequency magnetic fields that are in the brain alertness levels. If you wanna relax, you're gonna be in the alpha levels. If you want to be a light sleep or very deep, you know, light, re, uh, light sleep and uh, deep relaxation, you're in theta. Right. If you, uh, delta is not deep relaxation, delta is sleep. Mm -hmm. And so there's some, biohackers that put a little PEMF device under their mattress and they go to sleep and it helps them, it helps keep them in Delta basically for most of the night. So therefore they get better sleep, at least they say, then this is not the same application as whole body healing or even local tissue healing, because for the whole body healing, you're going to need a mat and a device that you're going to have to lay down on because it has to go over your whole body and from up close, not from you know, foot under where the mattress ends, but this has got to be basically touching your body. Is that correct? So yeah, even the ones that you put the uh, unit, control unit under the mattress, because of that law, inverse square law, by the time it reaches you, you've got almost no magnetic field. So you're really not in training very well at all. I, have, I, have, I am not a proponent of putting a magnetic device under your mattress. It's got to be next to your head then, huh? It got to be close, close to your head. 
Gotcha. Um, and so I, that's what I do. I use a Delta a machine called a, a, um, a uh, well, what's it called? Flex Pulse. Mm-hmm. So the Flex Pulse has a Delta program in it. It has, it has the main brain frequency programs in it. So I will put that unit into Delta under my pillow. Now, why use Delta? Because we know that we vary throughout the night. Right. But, you know, the problem is I've done brainwave entrainment using devices that ramp you down and ramp you up and try to emulate what you're doing during the night. And you can't do that. So you don't, you're not smart enough. The brain wants to do whatever it wants to do, right? Mm-hmm. So what I've learned over the years is I just present the, frequ- the brain with one frequency. And the brain will do what it wants to do. If I present that frequency that's strong enough and close enough to the brain, then more of the brain is going to be resonating at that frequency. And so you'll tend to bring that brain level down. Now, when people can't sleep, usually it's not at the beginning of the night. Usually it's later. Most people have a problem with early waking than they have with falling asleep. So if you're have if you have stimulating your brain all night in delta, you're it's like putting a weight around your waist and trying to swim at the surface. Mm-hmm. The weight's going to bring you down. You're going to have a hard time staying swimming at the surface. It's going to bring you down deeper. So what that does is that you, uh, from an efficiency perspective, you're going to spend much more of the night at lower theta levels. So you won't be aware. If you're aware of your dreams, you're in high theta. You're almost awake, mm-hmm. right? But if you want to sleep, you don't want to be in high theta. Right. You want to be in mid-range or low theta. Uh, and that's what the high, delta sleep, I call that delta sleep, uh, delta sleep does for you. I see. There's... A lot of chatter as well these days about the importance of REM sleep and and that being in the REM stages are close to alpha. You're almost awake, as you just said. And I guess if you do one of the frequencies, let's say just the delta frequency, you it's it's hard, right? What you're saying is you can't have delta for the first half of the night and then alpha or theta for the second half. It doesn't work that way. But uh, does having too much delta impair REM sleep or the alpha state that you're in as you're waking up? What I've discovered is that Magnetic stimulation of the brain with uh, frequencies Mm -hmm. um, dissipates very rapidly. So yes, you may wake up more sluggish in the morning if you have a lot of delta in your brain, more than usual. Uh, But then the payoff is you sleep better. So would I rather have a you know half an hour of being more you know sleepy, Mm -hmm. or would I rather have a full night's sleep with guaranteed full night's sleep, more guaranteed full night's sleep? Got it. So yes, you could you could play with these things, and ultimately you're going to figure out what you need to do. And even really strong delta to the brain doesn't work all the time. It doesn't work for everything. So I I do talk about hack a stacks. You may need a stack. You may need to add um, CBD to your stack. You may need to add melatonin to your stack. You may need to mm-hmm. add PEA. You may need to add other things to your stack until you find the the elements of your stack that work best for you. Yeah, the sweet oh, yeah. spot, the sweet spot for sure. Unfortunately, that's you know it is. It's a matter of finding that sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've, we're coming up on time, but I've got a couple more questions I want to ask you. So I've tried PEMF devices. I've sat on them. I've tried full body ones at different conferences, and surprisingly, they they the practitioners told me this that any areas that are problematic in your body are going to be pulsating more. They're going to be telling you where the problem is. And I didn't believe them, but when I did said sit down or lay down, sure enough. I got this throbbing sensation in different areas of my body. And I was like, huh, I've noticed pain there in the past, or I've had an injury there in the past. How does the magnetic field know to like have your body start vibrating or pulsating at that same spot, exact spot? The magnetic field doesn't know. The body knows. The body knows. So what you're doing is you're giving the body a stimulus with a fairly high intensity magnetic field and a healthy cell will say, I don't care. Mm -hmm. It'll ignore it. But damage, injury, has inflammation, almost always has inflammation. And the inflammation has nerves that are irritated. So you can't get off the couch and run a marathon right now. You're going to have to train. So magnetic therapy is cellular training. So if I push that that tissue that's inflamed and irritated and doesn't really want to work, if I push it too hard, ouch. So you can do scanning with high intensity magnetic fields around the body, different areas and detect the areas that say, ouch, well, those are areas that need help because they're saying, ouch, Mm -hmm. the areas that don't need help are ignored. So in a sense, it becomes diagnostic, but that just means that area needs attention. Okay. So once you figure out that there's one or two or three areas or more in your body that need attention, 
Now, the question is, how do you actually practically apply this? Because if you go to a practitioner and you need 60 sessions, like do a month for 60 days, that's going to be pretty cost prohibitive, right? So you've got to figure out a strategy where it's not breaking the bank, but you have something you can use long-term. How would you approach this, this? I know you've talked about this in the book, but I'd like for you to explain how people should think about using PMF and should they own the device? Should they rent it? Should they go to a practitioner? Okay, so that leads us to offers. The first offer I'd like to give your audience is that they can get the list of 80 conditions. Mm-hmm. So you can go to Dr. Paul, you can go, and we'll put this in your show notes. You're gonna have show notes, right? Yep, yep. We'll put this in your show notes, the link. So you can get the, you can get the 80 conditions, the list of 80 conditions and see if you got one of those. And most likely you do. <laughs> Almost everybody has something. Mm-hmm. The second uh, offer I'd like to make is that you can actually sign up to get the book. So we can get on the list. And when the book comes out, we'll email you and let you know that the book is available. Okay. And then the third is that you, if you're serious about magnetic field therapy, and when, I, when I'm saying serious, you're going to have to probably invest in a magnetic system. Uh, and if it's got to be at least $1,000. You can go to drpollock.com. And we have a product comparison guide on drpollock.com. Great. That's going to be in the supercharged book. But in the meantime, if you're really interested in a magnetic system for yourself, go to drpollock.com, go to product comparison guide. And if you're interested, then you can actually sign up for a consultation. So if you go to the search box or on the right side on the homepage, you can see um, consultations. You can sign up, fill out a form, and then we can set, you can get set up for a consultation. But we're not going to... Uh, do consultations for people who want a $500 machine. It's not worth my time, mm-hmm. right? So you really were talking about devices that are probably you're most likely going to need, significantly need. And if you have one of the 80 conditions, most likely you're going to need one of the devices that's more appropriate for the, for the 80 conditions and even for health maintenance. So fortunately, we have new devices that are available now that are relatively inexpensive. So I mentioned that some, some devices out there that are one Gauss, and they sell for five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? Yeah, we have a five thousand plus dollars. We're on five thousand, five to six thousand dollar machine. That's four thousand Gauss for five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? Got it. Uh, wouldn't you rather have that reserve? Yeah, because you've told me you've taught me that intensity matters, and so if that is true, then of course I want the higher intensity device, and it does does no harm. So why not? Exactly. And uh, that I warn people, there's a, there's a, there is a warning. What is it? If you get an urge to put on a cape, <laughs> fine, you can have your cape. You're going to be but Superman you, soon? But don't try to jump over a thing tall. <laughs> okay, Banff can't help you if you're dead. Can't heal dead tissue. Well, yeah, the, the landing, I understand, can be rough. Got it. Okay, so that was the other question I had is how can people dip their toe and so I guess if you're not if you're not ready to buy it, then go get a consult with you to kind of talk through some of the conditions that people are having, and then you can guide them onto the device that they should get. And not all of them cost five thousand dollars. Some may, but there you're are saying... there are local ones that are a lot less. Okay, so that's if good to know. If you local and all you can afford is something local, then we have local devices that are high enough intensity to be able to help you locally. Okay. And then once you're done with the local conditions, then you can either sell it or give it back and then get to a whole body device. There's always, which... there's always local stuff. Okay. There's always local stuff. There, there we go. It's not today, it's tomorrow. And especially for the biohacking community, there's always local stuff. That's true. You got to keep one handy sometimes even when you travel. Okay. Um, I think that's it. I was going to ask where people can find you, Dr. Pollock. And I believe you've mentioned the website, but go ahead and do it again. Yes. It's Dr. Pollock, D-R-P-A-W-L-U-K.com, drpollock.com. Fantastic. Gentlemen and ladies, this person, this man is a expert on PEMF therapy. He's written multiple books on it. I read his newest book and I was very impressed with all the data, the science, and more importantly, I think It was all about the practicality of how to apply this, what different machines out there, what intensity means, what frequency means, how to treat these conditions, what supplements you should even take as you're treating these conditions. So he's gone into a lot of depth and I'm sure it's a labor of love. So Dr. Paul, thank you very much for coming on the Anti-Aging Hacks show. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. 